I wonder where he's at, Steve. Usually the Gumpa Hunter doesn't take too long. He's back pretty quickly. Is there a reason why you're not talking to me? Is it because I put a girl on the higher part of the shelf? Is it because I haven't been showing you in the videos? God damn it, yes, Crow. It is because you haven't been showing me the goddamn videos. Okay. All right. Oh, there you are. Yeah. I don't want you ever call me again. That thing was a beast. Wait, Gumpa Hunter, what, what happened? Never again. Never. Well, goddamn. Even the Gumpa Hunter can't even control it. All right, let's go ahead and get the building. Hey, so what's going on, guys? This is the Krosama, and right in front of you is probably going to be one of my favorite kits I'm going to paint when I eventually get around to painting it because I know I'm just super lazy when it comes to painting uh, but I will paint this in some time in the future uh, because I really want this kit to just be like the hallmark of my actual uh, shelf we'll see though um, it, I mean this thing is just beautiful uh, cover art everything about this is just sexy so um, the one thing I definitely need to just say is that this is a Gundam Base Limited uh, kit, and I could not have gotten this without uh, the help from New Type. Uh, they definitely assisted me with getting this kit. So, I mean, big shout outs to them. Uh, big shout out to Harry as well. Um, really awesome guys over there at New Type. So, definitely thank you for allowing me to get this kit. Now, with this being a Gundam Base Limited kit, it's going to be really hard for a lot of people to get, or if you do get it, you're going to be paying a lot of money if you're not within Japan or even like Korea. I think also, I don't know if there's a Gundam Base in Hong Kong, uh, but basically if you're not next to any Gundam Base uh, locations, you're going to be paying probably upwards to about $190 to maybe $200 for this kit. Uh, but it does retail for about 130 so a $70 markup, which probably is going to be including the shipping and everything, you know, I, I think that's fairly, um, that's reasonable, to be honest. Now look at the sheer size. I'm going to do some comparisons right now. So for box comparisons, uh, here it is next to a about a master grade size box, a very beat up box of that. Uh, but you're only going to have about that much left uh, as far as room. So this is definitely going to be around the, uh, the size of a Sazabi size box. And here it is next to a high grade box. So wow, yeah, definitely going to be a lot bigger. And this kit was released in 2019 around July. Stocks are still super high, so if you really need to get your hands on this kit, now would be the time to do it. And here's some information about the suit right here. You can get a beautiful look at the unicorn mode right here on the side of the box. And some information on the kit such as the transformation of the head, as well as the cockpit figures. And here you're going to get a nice shot of the destroy mode. Now what's going to be included in the box is obviously going to be the beam smart gun, the armed armor DE, the Defense Extension, the Vibro Nail, the Hyper Beam Javelin, the Xeno Connect, and some of the basic weaponry. And lastly, on this side of the box, you're just getting some information about Gundam Base Tokyo. Now, in terms of the packaging, you're going to have three different sections right here in the box. And here's everything that's going to come in the box. So, 42 runners in total, two beam sabers, and uh, some wiring. That's pretty much about it. All the years spanning from 2007 all the way to 2019. So we're not gonna look at each individual runner, but we are gonna look at the year of the runners, like uh, basically like what parts are gonna come, come with what and exactly what the colors are gonna look like. And you already know the details because I've reviewed uh, Massive Gray Unicorn kits in the past. So yeah, this is gonna be no different. So this kit is going to have a basically like a neutral gray color tone uh, for some of the runners, mostly just going to be all the inner frame. Next is going to be white runners. It almost looks like pearlescent, but you don't really see the kind of like pearlescent effect in there. But it kind of has like a uh, like a coating that looks like it's more pearl kind of. I think it's, I think it is a pearl coating, but you don't really see it defined as you do like an official pearl coated kit so it still looks really good i'm still i'm, I'm going to be painting mine pearl anyways uh but it is really nice that if you don't want to paint this kit you still get kind of like that little look and next is going to be this navy blue which is really only going to be for these uh, ammo packs uh to be frank i'm probably not uh going to do any painting to the uh the beam magnum uh nor the beam bazooka or not the beam bazooka uh but the actual bazooka because 
I just don't really have an interest to pose it with either of those two weapons. I'm just going to do the javelin uh, with all the other kind of like added weapons that are showcased in the box. And next you're going to have is a lighter tone gray. Uh, this is going to be for the beam magnum as well as the bazooka. And as you can see, it's only a tad bit lighter uh, than the actual inner frame uh, runner. And next is going to be this metallic blue. So only a few runners are going to actually going to have this metallic blue, but it looks really good. It's it just really stands out. The uh, the glossy kind of sheen on the armor it looks fantastic. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to go about doing the uh, the blue for my kit. I was thinking just keep it metallic, uh, but I'm I'm just I'm kind of on the fence if I want to do a high gloss or if I want to do metallic. So we'll definitely see in the future. And it's going to be this darker metallic blue. So looks really good. It's going to be pretty much a lot darker than the uh, the lighter blue. But yeah, this is going to be mainly for the feet as well as the backpacks and uh, just some other little parts. And lastly, you are, of course, going to have all that beautiful blue cycle frame. This is what I'm most excited about for painting because I have some ideas on how I'm going to get this uh, painted. I, I, I kind of tested it with uh, the Phoenix high grade I did last year. So I'm going to try something else this year just to kind of perfect my idea of how to actually paint cycle frame. And you've probably seen it when I did the narrative C packs. That's kind of the route I'm going to go for. So we'll definitely see how it's going to turn out in the future. Now all these runners right here, these are all from 2007, which is, it should be the Verka Gundam Unicorn. So this is going to be a bulk of your runners all from this one particular year so the base kit you could definitely say is the 2007 Gundam Unicorn but we are going to have some other years that we're going to take a look at. Next we're going to have is going to be 2010 so 2010 I believe is the OVA Gundam Unicorn now what's kind of weird is that you're going to get parts that are for you know the, basically the same thing but one is going to be blue one's going to be white so I'm pretty sure this is only going to be for the V-fin and this right here uh, you're just going to use these for the actual leg parts. Uh, but this, I, I'm not really too certain on exactly why this is. Uh, I know they said that they fixed some things with the 2010 release, but these are the only 2010 runners that you're getting in this box. And next is 2011. So y'all know what 2011 was. That's the full armor unicorn. So you are going to have parts right here that's going to be for the fuel tanks, but this is only going to be one fuel tank so that's kind of like a it sucks that you get you get a little bit of a tease you can't make an actual like full armor perfectibility unicorn uh there's gonna be some parts as well so a lot of this is just going to be a minute but you're gonna have the beam javelin right here so looking very beautiful with that nice clear blue very excited about that but yeah only three runners from the full armor unicorn that released in 2011 and next we have is 2012, which was the Banshee. Now this is the OVA Banshee, so this is the one that actually has um, the vibrating claw. Uh, so this is gonna be all the parts that you are going to need to make up that actual part. And then just some clear parts right down here. Not too sure if mu if like these leg parts are gonna be used at all, but you are gonna have uh, some parts up here that are gonna be for the weapon on the right arm. And that's pretty much gonna be about it. You got some inner frame parts right there. Now next we have is 2013. To be honest, uh, I, you know, without looking it up, because I don't want to just like pretend that I know everything. Um, now these are going to be the shields, the DE shields. I want to say this was for the Phoenix, but I think the Phoenix didn't come out until 2014 or 2015. So these might have been just like standalone shields. Uh, that's kind of like my my thoughts. Like I'm pretty sure these are just like standalone. They might have been packaged separately, and you could have like ordered them then. Uh, but I. I you know honestly i just i can't remember uh that well and you're gonna have some inner frame parts all right here next is 2014 and that was the banshee norn so yeah just gonna have the parts that are going to be for the back of the uh the backpack and that's pretty much going to be about it you got some clear blue some blue and some white and some gray and next is going to be 2018 which was the phoenix narrative so this is just going to be those stabilizers uh for the tail looks really good cannot wait and you're going to get some extra little parts right here for those uh de shields and lastly you're going to get a 2019 runner which i don't really know what this runner is going to be used for it uh it looks like it's just a lot of different like connection points so we'll definitely see what all this is going to go to but just in my mind as of right now i can't think of where to go to except for maybe the stabilizers um but that's that's probably like my best bet uh, otherwise it may be used for like to strengthening some connection points i'm i mean it kind of looks like 
its joints, uh, mainly for the shoulders. So we'll see what uh, what these things are going to be going to in the future. Now you also get two wires, so these are definitely going to be used for the uh, the stabilizers. Two beam saber effect parts. Bandai, what is this? What what is this? This is okay. Dry transfers, I can accept. What the shit is this? Stickers? Sticker markings? Trash. What is this? Goddamn stickers. A hundred and thirty dollar kit. And look at these stickers. You know what? I'm, I'm painting my kit anyway, so it doesn't matter. And lastly, you do get a manual. So yeah, this is just gonna be a really big manual. Of course, you're gonna see all those runners and just looking at all the different parts that's gonna construct this monstrosity, this beautiful monstrosity. But that's pretty much it. There's not really too much in terms of like what's going on in this manual. Um, construction and you got the transformation. This is gonna be a pain to review, I can already tell. So uh, definitely buckle up and expect a super long review. I don't really want to, I, I don't see myself separating this into multiple different parts like transformation and you know weapons and all that. I'm probably just gonna make it one big long review. Uh, here's gonna be where all the markings are, but you know, this is always just a suggestion. So uh, you could, I'm probably just gonna use this as like a reference point. And then right here, if you want to paint it the exact colors as displayed um, you know, on the kit, then you got the colors right there. And then you're also gonna have the figures. So only three colors for the figures, which isn't bad. And I might actually uh, paint old boy. Is it Banaji? Uh, it is, yeah, Banaji Lynx. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's it guys. So I don't see myself painting this kit anytime soon. I am gonna build it and then I'm just gonna throw it right in the box after the review. So once I kind of have some time, maybe around September, uh, then we'll probably dig this bad boy up and start painting. But hey, that's it for me guys. I didn't want to make this this unboxing alone super long, uh, but definitely expect the review itself to be very long because I, you know I like to drag some things out and include a lot of good poses and expect a lot of good poses with this kit. So that's it for me guys. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.